Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you listening right now. Thanks to all of you, including Erwin Stewart, Ken Hayes, Philip Shane, and David Tiemann. On this episode of DTNS, Google starts the long road to identifying fake images, why driving assistance might be more dangerous than full autonomy, and how the teens will get around Instagram's rules to keep teens from using Instagram like adults, because that's what teens do. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, September 17th, 2024 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Animal House, I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Shea. Can you believe it's September 17th? Yes. <laughs> I feel like we do this all year ra- all year la- long where you're like, I can't believe it's already whatever day it is today. So No, actually know. yesterday on Apple Vision show, Eileen said, can you believe we're already through sep- uh, halfway through September? And I was like, yeah. what? And I kind of, lo- I was, that was the 16th as we recorded. And I was like, you did it to me again. When you, September? But when you, you track back. Every, you li- we live in a perpetual state of being surprised that it's whatever day it is. No, it's true. I made a yeah. joke several months ago, like, you guys, it's almost Christmas. And now it's almost Christmas. Now it really is almost mm. Christmas because yeah. the Christmas decorations are about to push the Halloween decorations <sighs> off the shelf and it's not even October. You know, <laughs> Not even you know. Thanksgiving yet. Those poor Thanksgiving decorations, they need a place too at CBS. Not everybody has Thanksgiving. That's true. But, yeah. yeah. Halloween is um, well. Well, uh, you know what I would like to do now? What's that, Tom? Cry. But instead, let's start (laughs) with the quick hits. Let's do it. OpenAI will move its safety and security committee into a board oversight committee made up of board members. CEO Sam Altman will step down from the committee. It will be chaired by Carnegie Mellon professor Zico Coulter and be briefed by company leadership on safety evaluations for major model releases and will, along with the full board, exercise oversight over model uh, launches, including having the authority to delay a release until safety concerns are addressed. That is in OpenAI. Words. That's going to make some people bored. Uh, Monday, Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger announced that Intel Foundry will become an independent subsidiary of Intel with its own board and separate earnings reports. It'll still be owned by Intel, though it would make it easier for them to divest it if they wanted, uh, but it will also give them independence in how to run the foundry. Intel also announced it will pause work on factories in Poland and Germany for two years. Uh, That's kind of a blow to the EU's chip plans. It will continue to build plants in Arizona, Oregon, New Mexico, and Ohio, probably in part because Intel just got $3 billion rewarded to it from the U.S. government to make chips for the U.S. military. And that plant in Ohio will be used to make a new chip for Amazon Web Services. Intel announced that it is expanding its partnership to build chips for AWS. Several thousand people were injured and at least eight died in Lebanon Tuesday when their pagers began to overheat and explode, reportedly all at 3.30 p.m. local time. The affected pagers were all from a shipment received within the past few days. It isn't clear why the pagers exploded, although there are some possibilities. One is that the shipment was infected with malware, which triggered batteries to overheat and explode. It's also possible that explosive charges were somehow placed inside the pagers in the shipment and then detonated remotely. Either way, physical access to the manufacturing process of the pagers would have to be needed, most likely. Yeah, uh, and Nick with the C was like, pagers, man, that, that's so old. Uh, but one of the reasons they had stopped using cell phones is they were worried about infected transmissions uh, and, and compromises. Yep. Snap has created the Spectacles 5. Uh, did you know there were four? Guess what? Now you do. Spectacles 5 is a pair of smart glasses designed for developers. They look huge, but they're not meant for aesthetics. Uh, The glasses are meant to test development of augmented reality features made for Snapchat. They weigh less than half a pound, uh, but they don't need to be tethered. So they're not heavy. You don't have to plug them into anything. They just look big on your face. Uh, They only have a 46-degree field of view, uh, which is not huge, but it's bigger than the previous spectacles. Uh, They have two Snapdragon processors, one in each arm by your temple. A new Android-based OS called SnapOS is launching along with this new pair of glasses. And they have a developer price. They cost you $99 a month with a one-year commitment period. So you're shelling out a total of $1,200 over the year. You also have to be approved by applying in the Lens Studio. 
I mean, they're not very cute, but boy, you know, that that's a lot of money. But if you're a developer, that's that's what they're going for. Uber is now rolling out verification for riders, not drivers, riders, to cut down on fraud. Most coverage of ride sharing has focused on how to protect a rider from the rare but still existent malicious driver. There are certain situations that we hear about here and there. Uber says it's banned 15,000 accounts for using fake names. Rare but existent malicious riders also exist. Rider verification is voluntary. So if you want it, you'll agree to have your name and phone number, which Uber already has because you've signed up for it, uh, you know, using somebody's name and phone number, checked against a third party database for any red flags. Then riders can choose to upload their ID for further verification. Once you're verified, you get a special badge that shows up in a driver's account and your account as well. So the drivers see that before accepting the trip. So if you're in a situation where you feel like you need a driver to, I don't know, uh, trust you more, this would be a way to do that. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to do it? Are you going to verify yourself? You know, I haven't taken an Uber in quite some time, but yeah, yeah. I have no problem with this. Yeah. It, it, you I know, mean, if it if it helps somebody feel better about picking me up, I'm cool with it. If I don't have to upload my ID, I'd rather not. So let them check their database for my phone number. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. But uh, I don't really want to be uploading my ID. Uh, not because I really think there's a huge risk, but, you know, the fewer times you do that, the better. So that's what yeah. I think. Google says it will add an about this image feature to search results in the coming months. It'll let you know if a photo was taken with a camera, edited by software, or produced by a generative model. And it'll tell you which camera, if it knows, which software, which generative model. It is going to use the C2PA standard to certify these images. Google also plans to include C2PA net metadata into its ad systems and YouTube videos eventually. But it's starting by putting it into search, which is its biggest product. This will be the biggest use so far for C2PA. C2PA stands for the Coalition for Content Provenance and Authenticity. It's a technical standard for watermarking, for identifying an image's orient origination. Uh, everybody's in this, Sarah. Amazon, Microsoft, Adobe, Arm, OpenAI, Intel, TruePic, Google, all part of the C2PA. Uh, well, not everybody. Obviously, I didn't say Apple, but, you know, there's a lot of companies in this. It's, yeah, Those it's are a just big group. The big ones, yeah. yeah. Uh, Leica and Sony support it in their cameras. So if you're if you're using a Leica or Sony camera, that C2PA metadata goes in and says, but shot on a Sony camera, shot on a Leica camera. Uh, Nikon and Canon have pledged to adopt it. They haven't rolled it out yet, but they're planning to. Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom let you add C2PA data when you're creating stuff in there. Uh, it is not supported by many other image editing. So Affinity doesn't have it. GIMP doesn't have it. Uh, I guess the big question here is how as effective is this going to be if not all the cameras have it, not all the images are going to have it. So a lot of the images Google won't be able to tell you anything about because it's not trying to guess. It's just looking at the C2PA standard. Yeah, so so that's my question, right? Is because I was on Sunday night, I was watching the Emmys and there were, you know, certain actors that I just wasn't familiar with, right? So it's like do a Google search, you know, look through some images kind of thing. Okay, so if I'm doing something like that, that's fairly innocuous, you know, do I get a little label of, you know, this was AI generated, you know, this person doesn't really look like this kind of thing. Yeah, right. You know, or or, or just, I don't know, just, just metadata in general. Can Google not do this uh, without, you know, Leica and like <laughs> Leica and Sony? Do they have to be the camera that took the photo in order for us to get this information? Because if so, this is a good first step, but a, a pretty small first step. Yeah, this step is not going to solve the problem that the C2PA was set up to hopefully someday try to solve. But this step is essential to eventually solving the problem. Uh I, I, it's easy to dismiss this. Uh, I'm sure people out there are like, well, if it's not going to be on most of the images, what good is it? But if Google is doing this, a lot more companies will say, well, Google's doing it. I want to look good. You know, I, yeah. I, I want not, shot on a Nikon camera to show up on a bunch of images. Uh, so maybe we should hurry up and implement it. Maybe it'll encourage more people to do it. And I think the end game, like the ultimate thing they want is 
if they can get it where everybody's doing it, if it's standard for anybody using Photoshop to say, yep, turn on the C2PA metadata, if it's standard for all the cameras to have it, then when you go to Google, you'll see that most of the images someday, right, theoretically, most of the images would have that label. And in that world, if we can get to that world, the ones that don't have the label, you wouldn't trust anymore because they would be in the minority. Right. So now my question is, of these companies who have pledged support for this, um, and I know you mentioned, you know, Apple isn't there yet. Apple sort of beats to its own drum in, in many ways. But, you know, is there any situation where it would not benefit the company? You know, it's like if you use a Leica camera and you take an image and, you know, you, you, you modify it somehow and it ends up on the Internet and there's a label of like used with a Leica camera and also, uh, you know, run through mid journey kind of thing. It's like, does that hurt Leica in any way? Does that hurt any of these companies in any way? The only downside I can really think of is the cost of implementing it, right? The, the sort of like, well, we have to have a developer not only make this, but then we have to have people maintain it and make sure, you know, it's not causing problems in the code and that it's properly implementing the standard. And as the standard changes, we sure. keep up, yeah. you know, it's that kind of thing. Somebody gaming the system in some way. Yeah, right. Now it gets weird. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and just uh, even if nobody's gaming the system, standards evolve, right? And you have to keep up with them. And that's cost that, that costs time, which costs money. Um, so I, I don't think there's any downside to a camera showing up. Uh, and I think Google putting it in search really moves it down the road of, well, we better implement this. Uh, I don't think other than the cost of implementing it, there's anything to say, oh, if I see that company's name in the metadata, it would be bad. Unless right. you're talking yeah. about MidJourney or OpenAI uh, or Eleven Labs. Eleven Labs is part of this uh, too, in which case, you know, an embarrassing image might be labeled and then people get upset. Like, why was this allowed to be made? But honestly, I don't think C2PA is going to be the biggest source of those kinds of stories. So I doubt that's a huge disadvantage, to be honest. It seems to me that uh, in our, uh, you know, burgeoning age of, is this real? <laughs> even though images have maybe been real or not real for quite some time, decades even, um, it, it behooves a company to be like, yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to help everybody be a little bit smarter about how things are made. Here's where mm -hmm. it came from. You know, metadata has been helpful to photographers for, again, decades. Yeah. This, this is something that can just be a little bit more front facing for, for people to, to, uh, to know a little more. As it were. Hmm. As it yeah. were. Good good turn of phrase there. Uh, Nick with a C says it might provide a false sense of security that is bypassable. In other words, because you don't have to add it, then maybe people will think, you know, well, images are safe now because there's this thing. I I don't think that's really the, the problem yet. There could be a stage in adoption where that becomes a problem. But really, the, you know, the problem is that companies will be looking at each other going, well, I don't want to implement it until you implement it, uh, you know, because they don't want to spend the money on it unless they have to. And Google doing this is one of those like, well, one of the biggest companies is doing it. So maybe we ought to. All right. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety conducted months-long studies with 14 Tesla Autopilot and 29 Volvo Pilot Assist drivers. Results showed that drivers using these systems were more likely to engage in distractions, such as checking their phones or maybe eating and not looking at the road. They adapted quickly to safety measures like briefly touching the steering wheel without fully focusing on the road itself. In particular, Volvo drivers were called out, found to be distracted roughly 30% of the time while driving with pilot assist active. IIHS says in the report that better safeguards are needed to ensure attentive driving. And Tom, this one stuck out to me because shocked. I have a Volvo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you have this, don't you? I have a Volvo, and I also have Pilot Assist. I actually mm -hmm. have – Pilot Assist is – come standard on certain Volvo models that are newer than my car. But when I got my car, it was part of the advanced, like, technology package, I think it was okay. called. So, so I have this, and I've used it. And I'll tell How you. How many sandwiches have you eaten? While zero. Down oh my gosh. The 405. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I have eaten in my car. Let's be honest. I'm not going to lie about that. But but not while using pilot assist. No, there's no way. So the thing with pilot assist is 
Um, and this is a, it works a little bit different than Tesla's autopilot where you, you really can't just sort of like watch a movie and, and zone out a bit. But pilot assist is it will keep you in your lane. It'll, it'll turn, you know, it'll, it'll break. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of great on a highway, you know, where like maybe you're not going super fast kind of thing, but you have to, um, otherwise be, you know, uh, hands on the wheel engaging and, you know, breaking yeah, it can and, slow and, you down and speed you up, you know, and that and, sort of thing. Yeah, and, yeah. and I've used it and at the same time, and you do have to, you have to touch the steering wheel, if not more every 30 seconds where it just turns off. Mm -hmm. Um, so I learned that early on where I was like, okay, well you can't really like <laughs> check out completely, but Asked a friend of mine uh, this morning who has a similar Volvo to me, and he was like, it's so great. I don't even really drive that thing. It just drives itself. <laughs> you know, I just knock it with my knee every uh -huh. 30 seconds. And I'm like, uh -huh. I don't even know if I could do that with my knee. I haven't thought about that. That seems really dangerous. But no, seriously, every time I use this, and I have it in a while, um, I, I just, I don't trust the system. I don't, mm -hmm. you know, and maybe yeah. that's an ego thing where I'm like, Neh. but it's like, if I, if something were to happen because the car went rogue and it wasn't me, I feel way more at fault than if it was me. I think the study shows you're the outlier. That's, that, that, that's what I'm, that's what I'm getting here is that uh, I'm like you, I would, I would be paranoid about letting it drive and I would be watching all the time. Like you're supposed to the idea with yeah. these things saying you need to touch the wheel every 30 seconds or whatever is really to say you should Don't be having your hands on the wheel the whole time. You yeah. should never let go of the wheel. Uh, you should just, you know, this should take the pressure off of your driving, but you should be paying full attention. The every 30 seconds is just a way to tell if your hands are still on the wheel. But what happens is people like your friend go, great. So the rule is I just have to touch it every 30 seconds. I'm going to do that with my knee. And that's what they found in the study is that most people just adapt to whatever the test is. They don't go with the spirit of the rule and say, okay, I will pay attention like you and I do because we're paranoid, not because we're better. Uh, they are less paranoid and they're like, so I just need to bump it every 30 seconds. Got it. And they check out more. Uh, to me, that that just shows. And I, I know some people are like, well, duh, we all, all knew that that was the case. But sometimes we're surprised that what we assume is not true. So it's okay. K when we have a study that goes, no, what you assumed was true, because now we aren't assuming, we actually know. And I think what it shows is that these partial assist systems are actually more dangerous than fully autonomous cars. Like, yes. you know, the, the, yes. the idea that it will lure you into a false sense of security because it's like, well, I just bumped the wheel every 30 seconds. Uh, it is not capable of full self-driving. And the reason you're supposed to pay attention is it will do things that it shouldn't do sometimes. And you need to be able to correct it immediately. Whereas yeah. an autonomous car is designed to not do anything that will endanger itself or others. Uh, and you don't have to pay attention. Like right. you tell me, which do you feel safer in a Waymo that you have ridden in that doesn't have a driver uh, or your own Volvo that has this partial self-assistance system? I mean, I hate to say it, well, I don't hate to say it because I'm not that great of a driver, but um, but but uh, I will say it. The Waymo is way easier. <laughs> you know? I mean, listen, you, if you if you don't want to sit in the back of an autonomous vehicle or even in the front seat, whatever it is, then, you, you know, you're just not the target audience. But I I see, you know, and I've said this, the Waymos in my neighborhood, they're all over the place. I mean, they really came out of nowhere, you know, like just like they're just like these just, I don't know, they're everywhere. And, um, I, every time, every time I pass one, I look to be like, is there a driver in the front seat occasionally, but mostly not. Yeah. Um, and there's usually somebody in the back. I mean, people are using Waymo's a lot, uh, at least in Los Angeles. And the thing with the Waymo is, yeah, I mean, if it goes rogue, it, yeah, that would suck, but you're in the back, you have nothing to do with it. And you almost feel safer in a way. Cause you're kind of tucked in the back uh, when I use, um, I actually do use my uh, assisted driving to, to parallel park in my uh -huh. Volvo, which is really helpful. Um, even though I'm pretty good at it myself, but like I, sometimes I'm oh, like, yeah. eh, just let the car do it. But that feels like, okay, I'm already, I'm stopped. <laughs> you know, we're not going 45 miles an hour or more type of thing on the road. Um, the idea that, yeah, I'm sort of just still super engaged, but the car is doing it for me. 
there's something about that where I'm like, now it's either or. Like the yeah. car's either doing it or I'm doing it. Some something about that like assisted <laughs> yeah. thing doesn't work for me. Like I I find it the few times that I've used it, I find it helpful uh, in that it kind of nudges me to do the right thing because it's like, hey, I, I'm going to slow down now. I'm like, oh, good idea. <laughs> you should do that. But I don't hand it over. Uh, and right. and I think that's what we're we're learning here is that more people do hand it over, uh, and that's that's probably not not a uh, not a great thing. So I I think I I I don't know that there's a solution to this other than if you have one of these uh, self assisted systems, be aware that it will lure you into a false sense of security, uh, and that you know the fully yeah. autonomous systems. I mean, if you think about it. We hear about fully autonomous systems every time they have a fender bender, every time that the horns honk too much. Uh, we we hear about self-driving assistance systems when someone relied on them and had a crash, right? We don't yeah. hear about the minor things at all. We never see headlines about the dozens to hundreds of fatal car crashes that happened from people who were operating them themselves without self-assistance, uh, without, you know, driver assistance systems. So it really, if you look at the stats, it, there's a clear slope of, of safety uh, going on and, yeah. and driving without the assistance is still more dangerous than driving with it. Mm-hmm. Well, folks, if you've got a thought about this, or maybe you found a story that's like, ah, but you didn't consider this, did you? Uh, let us know on our subreddit. You can submit stories and vote on them and talk to each other about them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. Starting now, Instagram teen accounts are mandatory in Canada, Australia, the United Kingdom, and the United States. They'll come to the EU later this year and to other countries in 2025. If your profile says that you are younger than 18, then you will be automatically moved to a teen account. Teen accounts are private by default. They don't let strangers direct message you, and they silence your notifications between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. They limit what types of content you can see in Reels and on the Explore page, and they let you pick age-appropriate content you would like to see more of. Uh, if you are a user age 16 or older, you can change some of those settings. You can, I, I imagine a lot of 17 year olds are going to be like, oh my gosh, they made my account private. Now I got to make it public again. And yeah. you can do that if you're older, older than 16. Uh, if you are younger than 16, you need your parents' permission to change those settings. Uh, and there's some new parental controls that go along with this, including the ability to see who a child has messaged in the past week. You can't see the content, just who they've talked to and which topics cheat teens have chosen to see more of when they when they choose those age appropriate topics uh so sarah not that either one of us have ever done this but what if you lie about your age on the internet because well, yeah. on the internet no one I knows mean, you're a dog <laughs> yes. as somebody who would never get a fake id back in the day i would <laughs> never do something like that i can't imagine um but but let's just put myself in modern times. If I was a teen today, there are pretty easy ways to just have a, an adult account. Not yeah. adult content, but, you know, an account that it, but you I, signed I'm up 18 and said, or older. I'm 28, even though you're 14. Right, right. right. Yeah. You know, you can circumvent this stuff really easily, and teenagers know that. Some teenagers probably, you know, are, are into this. Maybe this feels like a safer sure, community yeah. and environment. Um, you know, it's not like every teen is trying to, you know, beat the system type thing. Yeah, but, but we're um, not concerned with yeah. the ones who aren't. <laughs> it's only the ones who are it's, trying to beat the system. Yeah, but, it's more the, yeah. it's, it's more the, the this is not going to stop any, anybody under 18 from, uh, you know, having the, uh, an Instagram account as if they were over 18, uh, I, you know, I think there are a lot of reasons that Meta probably feels uh, under pressure more than ever to offer something like this. I, I don't think it's a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. So, so here's here's a couple of things that Instagram is doing to combat the the changing of age, and they're not trying to make you be honest about your own age, just whether you're over 18 or not. If you're 
you know, 47 and you claim to be 21, that's fine. They don't care. What they care is that if you're 14 and you claim to be 19. Uh, so if ahead of this change, you get the idea of, uh-oh, I want to change my age from 14 to 18. If you are changing from below 18 to above 18, Instagram already requires you to verify that. So you'll either have to upload a video selfie, upload an ID, or have another user vouch for your age. Um, and I don't think you can just get your friend who's pretending to be 22 to vouch for your age. I think it has to be uh, someone verified with their age as well. Uh, if you are on an account that is older than 18 already and you're not 18, Instagram is going to start using machine learning to try to detect signals that you're not being truthful about your age, and they may ask you to verify in those cases. Now, the example they gave was you've got an account that says you're 19 years old, but you keep getting congratulations on your 14th birthday. Uh, that might be a signal that the machine will flag this account. I, I was like, I hope there's more than just that signal. I hope it's a very complex system, which I'm sure it is, because uh, otherwise everybody's just going to start pranking me and say, Tom, congratulations on your 14th birthday. And then Instagram makes me verify my age. Either that or the actual 14-year-old, all the friends will know not to say 14. <laughs> yeah, but but parents and to get around, yeah, but relatives yeah, yeah. and stuff. It's kind of harder to control that, yeah. that that sort of thing. Except it's a Finstagram, right? So nobody nobody knows you have it. Just your friends. Then your problem. Then you might be able to get away with it. Um, but yeah, it does seem like you said, Sarah. Instagram's trying to do the things it can do to you know keep. 18 year old or younger people on teen accounts as much as they possibly can. Roger, you don't have teens yet, but you know, no. your, daughters, your daughters will be teens within the next five to 10 years. Uh, how does this sit with you? Uh, I think it's, <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> Sorry to surprise you. With this. I, think it's, I, I think it's He's beneficial. He's all choked up that thinking about his, his little girls. Getting, getting little. <laughs> I think it's beneficial in that it, it does at least give additional tools to, to parent uh, parents in order to moderate or at least control uh, their teens access to this particular platform can also be, I, I also do feel a little cynical about it because as what you were laying, Sarah, they are under pressure and this is more of a like uh, afterthought measure that they included or, 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 or rolled out uh, to deal with a lot of the concerns that parents were. You think have. this is an afterthought? It feels pretty thorough to me. I mean, if it was thorough, it would have been out in the the beginning. I think. Oh, you're do, you're doing the yeah. old. Why didn't you think of this earlier? Well, situation? I mean, like because it, it's it's it was an issue back in the MySpace. But days, they're doing so it, it now. It, like yes. it's better than yeah. not doing it. That, I guess. No, that and and I totally and I'm totally down with that. I think, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think from the Instagram point of view, they have to be careful because they don't necessarily want to make it too onerous for teens to eventually migrate over to the full Instagram because they want to keep people. If, if you make it, if you make the barrier too high, eventually teens might just shrug their shoulders and move on to something else and potentially uh, lose Instagram, uh, a, a kind of a generational segue into, into their platform. You mean like if a 16 year old is like Instagram's no fun anymore on this teen account, they just yeah. stop using it and they never and, come back. And all yeah. their friends go find something else yeah. and that's what they use. And, that's and they what did. People it's go called on. TikTok. <laughs> no, you. I mean, it's funny. You, we joke about it, but it it, it very I'm much not joking. is the that's, case. Yeah, and, that's, no, that's very thing. true. And you know, it it is very much kind of like a breakfast here. You want to make it sweet and sugary enough for the kids to continually eat it, but not so bad that everyone says it's not breakfast food. It's just candy in a box. Yeah. <laughs> so 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 you you like these? Uh, are you worried? Uh, about your, I, I, you know, if if your daughter, you know, says I want an Instagram account, you know, wh at what point do you say, yeah, okay, fine? Um, you know, what's I would I would agree to it on this level of what they've rolled out and with all the parental controls, but I have a feeling when it comes when she's at that age, there will be something else. That yeah, they will true. Be in yeah, by the time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm amazed that you know, it, you know, I never thought Roblox would be the platform that it is for my my daughter and her friends to communicate that because that's what they use. They communicate over Roblox and they share stories and images and video of each other. Well, thank you, Roger. Uh, and if anybody else has thoughts about this, email us feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Speaking of, let's check out the mailbag. 
Let's do it. James the Trucker wrote in about Chris Ashley's hotspot woes that he talked about on the show yesterday. James says, I'm an over-the-road trucker and a PC gamer, and I use a T-Mobile home 5G hotspot. Of course, the corporate line is that those aren't made for my use case, but it works fine. And the soft cap at 5 gigs is something I rarely, if ever, notice. 50 50 gigs. (laughs) What did I say? You said five. Oh, 50 gigs. Yes. <laughs> five gigs. You'd probably notice that. I've tried to get one of Verizon's units, says James, because they claim there isn't even a soft cap, but I haven't been able to find a valid service address yet. I've tried many addresses of family and friends. Until I get a Verizon unit for comparison, the T-Mobile has been great compared to hotspots from my Pixel phones and using paid Wi-Fi from the truck stops that I frequent. Yeah, uh, one of our patrons, Turtley Control, uh, had a similar suggestion from the RV owner perspective, kind of the, kind of the same idea. Uh, and then Stealth Dave uh, suggested a travel router. So I forwarded all of this uh, to Chris. Hopefully one of these helps him out. Awesome. Patrons, stick around for the extended show, Good Day Internet. There's going to be a Sims movie. Forget whether you want it or not. It's happening. So what do we think it's going to be like? This woe is Fuenisha. Stick around. <laughs> you can catch our show live Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. We do it all weekday, guys. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. And we're back tomorrow with Scott Johnson joining us. He probably thinks something about the Sims movie, too. Talk to you then. The DTNS family of podcasts. Helping each other understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>